Malaysians unite to celebrate National Day in the new Malaysia. MACC recovers 27.6 million ringgit allegedly taken by spy agency officers. Good afternoon, happy Merdeka Day. Thanks for joining us and you're watching News on 2. I'm Jessica Lee. The National Day 2018 celebration today is an arena to unite all Malaysians in instilling a spirit of patriotism and importance of unity for the well-being of the nation. Now, theme Sayangi Malaysia Ku, the parade was held at Dataran Putrajaya in Putrajaya. The celebration began with the singing of the national anthem Negara Ku upon the arrival of the Anipatuan Agong Sultan Muhammad V. A 14-gun royal salute symbolic of 14 states in Malaysia was executed by the 41st Ceremonial Battery of the Royal Artillery Regiment and accompanied by the hoisting of the Jalur Gemilang. Also present to witness the parade were Prime Minister Tun Dr. Madam Mohammad and his wife Tun Dr. Sis Siti Hasma Mohan Ali, Deputy Prime Minister Datuk Sri Dr. Wan Aziza Wan Ismail, Cabinet Ministers and Foreign Representatives. A total of 12,295 contingents from various government agencies and private sectors and students were involved in the parade this year. It is estimated that a total of 300,000 people of various races, including tourists, attended the National Day celebration. The National Day parade was arranged by Prime Minister's Department and the Malaysia Armed Forces, as well as the National Department for Culture and Arts, which is chaired by the Minister of Communications and Multimedia, Gobin Singh Dio. Prime Minister Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamad last night gave the assurance that the Pakatan Harapan government will ensure that justice for all the people after having received or achieved the second independence by rejecting the previous government. Now, Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamad said the celebration should be celebrated with a sense of relief and comfort after achieving success brought by their own firm stand. Tun Dr. Mahathir, in his National Day message 2018 broadcast over television, said that the people are now living comfortably and he guarantees that the government will ensure justice for all the people, irrespective of race or religion. Ya, rakyat mencapai kejayaan hasil pendirian tegas mereka. Tetapi nikmat tidak datang melayang kerana kemenangan dicapai tindakan terhadap penjenayah juga tidak dapat dilakukan dengan serta-merta seperti kita tidak suka kepada cara-cara pentadbiran dahulu begitu juga kita tidak boleh amalkan cara yang kita benci dahulu pentadbiran mengikut undang-undang memerlukan masa untuk dilaksanakan tetapi percayalah Akhirnya, penjenayah akan meraih hukuman yang setimpal dengan kesalahan yang telah mereka lakukan. Sementara itu, rakyat dan kerajaan perlu berganding bau untuk memulih semula negara. Tugas kita memang berat, tetapi tidak ada kuasa yang boleh menghalang gandingan merakyat dengan pemerintah. Meanwhile, Tun Dr. Mahathir also guaranteed that the government will govern the country well in a prudent and disciplined manner. He said this includes its commitment and efforts in reducing the country's debt, which is currently showing good improvement. Tetapi rakyat juga perlu memain peranan. Jikalau kerajaan tidak mampu hulur wang seperti dahulu, sebabnya ialah Pembaziran seperti dahulu akan jejaskan proses pemulihan. Lagipun, kerajaan ini tidak mencuri wang rakyat untuk diberikan kepada rakyat sebahagian daripada hasil pencurian. Cara sebegitu bukanlah cara yang terbaik. Kerajaan akan wujudkan lebih banyak peluang pekerjaan dan perniagaan. Dengan cara ini, pendapatan yang diperolehi lebih memuaskan. 
ia adalah hasil titik peluh sendirian dan sudah tentu ianya halal. The Premier said that the government would always help the people who were genuinely poor or disabled by giving better aid than BRIM or One Malaysia's People's Aid. Now, on another matter, Tun Dr. Mahathir is considering the possibility of halting contributions to the Tabung Harapan Malaysia Fund. Now, the Prime Minister said the government had not picked a date when the fund would draw to a close. When asked on the perception that the fund was being used by certain companies as a lobbying mechanism to gain favours, such as government projects, Dun Dr. Mahathir said the government will not respond to such donations, adding that the government had refused a big donation from a company with certain problems before. It could be, it could be, but uh, we are not affected. There was one very big donation from a company that has uh, some problems. Uh, we refuse to accept it. The Premier said this to reporters after attending a roundtable discussion with ASEAN business leaders in Kuala Lumpur yesterday. Tun Dr. Mahathir had announced the creation of the fund on May 30th to enable Malaysians to make donations to help reduce the country's debt levels. The funds collected amounted to 179.9 million ringgit as of 3 p.m. yesterday. In another development, Tun Dr. Mahathir said there are plans to build a third Malaysia-Singapore link involving the eastern area of Johor to Pulau Ubin, Singapore. We need a third link in three to four years' time. Your views on this? There, there is some plan in, in the offing. There is already some plan. Recently, Johor Menteri Besar Dato Osman Sapian said that the state government is in the process of researching and making preliminary plans to build the Malaysia-Singapore link. Discussions have been held with an unnamed company to construct the project, whereby final recommendations will be presented to the federal government for its consideration. The Finance Minister Lim Guan Eng does not rule out the possibility that the prices of goods will increase after the Sales and Services Tax, or SST, which is being introduced tomorrow. However, it is still expected to be less than half the price when GST was implemented. Now, Lim said SST will only affect 38% of goods under the Consumer Price Index as compared to GST, which affected 60% of goods. Now, in addition, Lim said the list of items subject to SST has also yet to be finalised and is still undergoing improvements. Ada sebanyak uh, pengecualian untuk GST hanya 545 barangan saja. Tapi untuk SST kita telah kecualikan 5,443 setakat ini dan ia dijangka bertambah. Mengapa saya cakap macam, macam itu dijangka bertambah? Kerana bila kita ada sesi dialog, kita secara terbuka kita mengakui ini bukan sempurna, ini bukan final. Senarai ini kita boleh perbaiki lagi. The government has also updated the list of items that will be taxed between 5 to 10 percent and the 25 categories which will be subject to 6 percent service tax. The Transport Minister, Anthony Loksiu-Fook, yesterday handed over letters of approval for individual taxi permits to 174 taxi drivers and a 5,000 ringgit cash grant to subsidize the purchase of a new car to 47 of them. Now, he said the granting of the taxi permits to the taxi drivers whose vehicle lease had expired would help increase their income and encourage them to better serve their customers. Lok said the initiative is aimed at improving the standard of living and income of the taxi drivers, who are always a priority of the government. To date, 2,729 individual taxi permits have been handed over to taxi drivers whose vehicle lease had expired, while 721 eligible taxi drivers received the 5,000 ringgit grant. Lok assured the estimated 14,000 taxi drivers who had leased vehicles that the contract between the taxi drivers and the operator company companies would be improved. Ini adalah manifestasi bahawa kita tidak akan mengabaikan pemandu-pemandu taksi. Uh, walaupun kita uh, membenarkan ataupun mengamalkan dasar 
untuk uh, mengawal sedia dan membenarkan e-hailing tetapi pada masa yang sama kita juga akan uh, membantu pemandu-pemandu teksi untuk mendap dan juga juga untuk uh, membimbing mereka supaya mereka dapat berdaya saing dengan lebih maju In addition, Dok said the Land Public Transport Commission or SPAD under the Transport Ministry would improve and streamline the contracts besides ensuring compliance with the licensing conditions. The 4,000 out of the 10,000 registered cooperatives nationwide are found to be inactive as it provided a low return of income to its members and were also not well governed. Deputy Entrepreneur Development Minister Dr. Mohamed Hatta Mohamed Ramli said to overcome this, the management and administration of these cooperatives should be restructured to create a new competitive edge. Dr. Mohamed Hatta said liquidation of a cooperative is not the best solution as it involves assets and liabilities. Dr. Mohamed Hatta said in order to help these cooperatives, the Cooperative Commission of Malaysia is urged to provide fresh ideas, which includes e-commerce business ideas. Kalau kita tumpukan kepada pembangunan ini, nescaya kooperasi ini akan ada rasa minat ya? dan keluar daripada mindset lama dia iaitu kooperasi pinjam-minjam ya yeah. tapi lebih kepada kooperasi yang masuk ke dalam uh, industri sama ada infrastructure manufacturing ya yeah. e-commerce He said this in a press conference held after officiating the Excellence Award Ceremony and Student Entrepreneurship Day at SMK Tengku Sulaiman in Berseri at Padang Besar And coming up PAC proceedings on GST refunds loss to take place in September. The Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission or MACC seized 27.6 million ringgit following the arrest of former Director General of Malaysian External Intelligence Organization MEIO Datuk Hassana Abdul Hamid for misappropriation of government funds for personal use. Its Deputy Chief Commissioner of Operations Datuk Sri Azambaki said the cash was recovered from various locations, including a luxury condominium in Cyberjaya. Datuk Sri Azam said the funds which were said to have been misappropriated amounted to 49.52 million ringgit. He added that the commission is working to recover the remainder of the government's money, which is around 20.63 million ringgit. Datuk Sri Azam said the money was believed to have been brought into the country about three months ago. Kita juga uh, menyerulah kepada pihak-pihak yang mempunyai maklumat uh, berhubung dengan kes ini terutama sekali berhubung di manakah baki wang yang disyaki telah disimpan ataupun di, uh, digunakan uh, daripada wang yang telah di, trim, yang diselewengkan, yang disyaki telah diselewengkan untuk uh, memberitahu kepada eksperen Datuk Hasana is currently under remand for five days until Sunday to facilitate investigation into the matter. She is being investigated under Section 23 of the Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission or MACC Act 2009. The Public Accounts Committee or PAC will conduct an investigation on the missing goods and services tax or GST input tax refunds totaling 19.25 billion ringgit on September 12th, 13th and 20th. Chairman Datuk Sri Dr. Uh, Datuk Sri Dr. Ronald Kendi said the committee has listed more than six witnesses, including former Treasury Secretary General Tan Sri Muhammad Irwan Serigar. Now, Datuk Sri Dr. Ronald said during the three-day proceeding, PAC will call individuals from the Customs Department and the Finance Ministry over the missing GST input tax refunds. Kita akan panggil mereka, uh, penjawat awam dahulu, penjawat sekarang bekas menteri dulu, bekas menteri, sekarang menteri sekarang akan dipanggil uh, oleh uh, PC dan setelah pun dipanggil dan surat telah pun diedarkan dan uh, proseding pertama akan dibuat pada 12 hari bulan ini dan uh, disambung pada 13 hari bulan dan satu lagi proseding pada 20 dan akan ditentukan tarikh-tarikh yang seterusnya. He also said that the PAC is in the initial process of investigating two major issues, namely the missing GST refunds and the one Malaysia Development Berhad 1MDB scandal, adding that further details on this matter could not be revealed 
as it is still premature and can affect the ongoing investigations. Now, the Para government will take immediate action to tackle illegal logging activities at the post Kumar Resettlement Scheme, or RPS, in Greek Para. Ismail Tribasa Ahmad Faisal Azumu said if no immediate action is taken, it would affect the area's ecosystem. Ahmad Faisal said the matter will be discussed with the relevant authorities to ensure that action will be taken against those involved in the illegal logging activities in the area. Kawasan pembalakan yang sedang dibuat uh, yang begitu berdekatan dengan dam, dia akan uh, berhubung dengan uh, pihak-pihak yang berkenaan untuk memastikan uh, pemantauan dan tindakan segera dapat diambil. Ahmad Faisal said this after being invited as a guest on Perak FM. Meanwhile, speaking on another matter, Ahmad Faisal dismissed rumours made by irresponsible parties that the state government would be disbanded. After beating defending champions India 7-6 in a penalty shootout during the semi-final match at the Galora Bung Karno Hockey Stadium yesterday. Now, repeating the feat they achieved in a 2010 edition in Guangzhou, China, however, did not come easy as they fought until the end of the game to make it to all, forcing a penalty shootout. Malaysia, which is targeting a gold medal to book an automatic berth to the 2020 Tokyo Olympics, began the match well, taking apart the Indian defence with ease. India opened the score through a penalty corner by Harman Preet Singh and in the 32nd minute before national player Faisal Sa'ari fired in a field goal in the 39th minute to equalise. However, India went ahead just a minute later through Varun Kumar's penalty corner and as a victory looked imminent for India, Muhammad Razi Abdurrahim emerged the hero, scoring the Speedy Tigers' second goal in the 59th minute. In a dramatic penalty shootout, Malaysia's experienced goalkeeper S. Kumar saved three shots to bring Malaysia one step closer to winning its first gold medal in the event. Malaysia is set to face Japan in the final after they beat Pakistan 1-0 in the other semi-final match. Speaking to reporters after the match, national coach Steven Van Huysen said he did not expect the match to be dragged into a penalty shootout after devising a strategy to kill the match in regular time. I think uh, we fought our luck, we worked very hard, uh, we knew that we uh, the underdogs and we knew that there were great more chances and we needed to fight for every ball. We hung in there and got the equaliser and of course shootout is our lottery yeah. but I think the boys deserve it because after all the hard work they did, yeah. I'm happy for them. For seven of them they are playing the, the Malaysian contingent appears to be on course to meet the seven gold medal target when the country raked in its fifth goal on the 12th day of the 2018 Asian Games Jakarta Palembang yesterday. The national track cycling ace Mohamed Azizul Hasni Awang put up a sterling performance to back the men's individual sprint at Jakarta International Velodrome and it was the second medal for him after claiming a silver medal in the team sprint on Monday. It was all the more sweeter for Azizul Hasni when he ended a 16-year medal drought in the event after Josea Ng last won a silver medal in the same event in the 2002 Asian Games in Busan, South Korea. Azizul Hasni dedicated his gold as an early present to Malaysia's 61st birthday. The pocket rocket man made sure that the goal belonged to him when he swept aside Japan's Tomohiro Fukaya in a two-set final at the Jakarta Velodrome. It was also his first sprint goal medal at the Asian Games. Shah Firdaus Sharom, meanwhile, gave a good fight before bowing out to Im Che Bin from South Korea in the bronze challenge. That concludes this afternoon's edition of News on 2. In our top story, Malaysians unite to celebrate historic National Day in a new Malaysia. Now join us again at 5 p.m. for more updates on the latest happenings around the world. And on behalf of the News on 2 team, I would like to wish all Malaysians Selamat Hari Kebangsaan 2018. Thank you. I'm Jessica Lee. Stay tuned to TV2.